Hi, today I'm going to be taking a look at another couple of factions that have been around since the original Rogue Trader issue rulebook and seeing what I can do to create armies usable under their current codexes, which is um, the actually the 8th edition version, Ninth versions haven't been released yet, uh, but using only the Rogue Trader base figures. As I'm sure you can see already, I'm going to be talking about Tyranids and Gene Stealers. And I think that more than any other faction, these have changed in character a great deal since the first edition. The Tyranids always used that biotechnology. Um, they weren't specifically uh, extra galactic in Rogue Trader, but it wasn't said that they were from this galaxy. It was said there were 13 known high fleets, but there could be many more. The gene stealers uh, were completely unrelated to them. They were just an, an animal uh, from the moon of Umargle, I think it was, and that name cropped up in some of the Tyranid codexes later. Uh, initially, gene stealers would not necessarily be hostile towards humans. The hybrids could associate with humans and help humans, but that changed with the release of the Space Hulk game. Uh, where they became far more hostile and to introduce gene stealers onto a world was really to destroy that world. Uh, the Tyranids themselves uh, were merged with the gene stealers or rather the gene stealers were sort of rolled up into the Tyranid faction at the time of the release of Advanced Space Crusade where gene stealers could be used in this game as extra monsters for your Imperial troops to encounter. And since then, the two have gone hand in hand. Um, Gene Stealers, in fact, disappeared as standalone faction for quite some time. They were only included as part of these Tyranid army list books until far more recently, where they once again got their own army books. I'll be, and I'll be looking at both armies separately today. Starting with the Gene Stealer cults, I am going to begin, as I have done in previous videos, with the headquarters element of the army. And where better to start than the Patriarch himself. Uh, this figure, seated on a rather imposing throne, was released under Rogue Trader. Uh, and it was actually meant for a Chaos Gene Stealer cult, as well as a, a regular Gene Stealer army. You can see the eight-pointed star of chaos right there although with the patriarch seated in place you don't get to see that so he makes a rather fine army leader for my cult and along with this figure came Amagus so I can just use this again as Amagus his personal advisor and also included with them were these tiny little gene stealers which even back then were familiars so I can just use those as intended and I have a patriarch, a magus and some psychic familiars to boost their powers. Moving on to the core troops of the army I'm going to start with some neophyte hybrids and most of the squad you see here are just single piece metal figures. There were two variations produced, one with an auto pistol and a close combat weapon and one with an auto gun. Um, you'll notice each of these does have a third arm but it's not so massive that you can't explain they will be able to hide these under robes so I still think they meet the, uh, the, the requirements for neophyte hybrids instead of something more obviously alien. Uh, and one figure in the squad, this one, isn't one of the original single piece metal hybrids. This came slightly later and as I've had in many of the videos beforehand he has a metal body with plastic arms and a plastic weapon. The arms I've used here are just the same as used on the Imperial Guard figures and the weapon comes from what's called the Chaos Heavy Weapons Sprue but you first actually got that with some G plastic Gene Stealer hybrids in one of the Space Hulk expansions. 
so he is the support gunner for this squad and I would consider this that had been a conversion beaver to be a mining laser and of course since um, th this type of figure is quite flexible I also have an entire squad where I've just given them las guns and a las pistol taken from imperial guard figures a lot of these figures would have come with the uh, weapons and arms like this to begin with and again I've made use of a conversion beamer uh, from the chaos heavy weapons sprue to give me a support weapon and I would consider them mining lasers this squad of hybrids is made using the plastic figures from the Space Hulk expansion set Gene Stealer. Uh, they are obviously more alien than the metal figures I've shown you before, so I'm going to be using these as acolyte hybrids from earlier generations. And these had a single pose of legs, torso, and head, then with some separate arms. Again, these arms are very much alien, looking very gene steel like to match the earlier generations of hybrids. And the weapons are LAS pistols uh, for three of them. These come from Imperial Guard weapon sprues and squat weapon sprues. And a couple of them have got hand flamers. Those come from a pistol sprue that was released towards the end of the Rogue Trader era had all sorts of pistols on it and it was actually meant for the game confrontation sort of prototype necromunda and for the squad leader i've also added this power sword which came from an orc weapon sprue just as with the current generation of games workshop kits you use a variation on the imperial guard infantry squad to represent a brood brother squad you can also use rogue trader vintage imperial guard figures to represent brood brothers in an older army and here i have got a selection of old imperial guard or in fact even imperial army with most of them uh, with a couple of grenade launchers added in and that makes quite a nice little Brood Brothers squad. But there were other options available at the time. In the very early days of Rogue Trader, there were a range of pirates and mercenary figures available. And I've got some of those here. I think they make quite a good uh, Brood Brother force. The sort of underground militia that may have formed hidden away in dark places on a planet out of the view of the Imperium. And also, there are these figures here, and these are figures meant for the game I mentioned earlier, Confrontation, the primitive version of Necromunda. And largely these are scavy figures, or a scavy figure. And then there is one, I think it's just called a Brat, which is functioning as my squad leader. And all of these figures are the metal body with plastic arms and weapons, sort of hybrid figures that Games Workshop went through a phase of producing. But between them, this little lot gives me quite a nice variety of Brood Brothers to be backing up my more alien troops. Moving on to the more elite troops in my army, I'm going to start with the Gene Stealers themselves. And there are a few sources of these available during the Rogue Trader years. These all come from the Space Hulk game. They're all plastic, and you've got 20 of them in the original game, and you've got an, uh, some more in one of the expansions. And I believe there was also a, a version of these all plastic figures released in the game Space Crusade, which Games Workshop did in partnership with MB Games. Not Advanced Space Crusade, which I've uh, already shown you the box for, just Space Crusade. Um, and I don't happen to have any of those, but I think they were pretty much the same as these figures that you're looking at here. There were also some metal figures uh, that had just some slightly different poses. And for a while, again, Games Workshop did sort of hybrid of a metal torso with plastic arms, uh, no weapons this time. Um, so you could adjust the poses yourself. I've got uh, two squads of those from the original Space Hulk. And also for some of my more elite troops, 
I'm going to put some of the variation on the Magus figure. There are quite a few available. Um, you saw the sort of whispering Magus advisor earlier. And here we have another couple of them. And I think these can make some quite useful versions of the, the, the hybrid character models, which are in the elite section of the Gene Stealer army. The guy with the terminal, I think he makes quite a good uh, Clan Avus figure with the very technical aspects of the support for the army. While uh, the guy with the staff is the tactical genius of a Nexus. When it comes to the heavy support element of the army, of course, Broodbrother heavy weapons teams, and they're pretty much the same as the just the Broodbrother squads themselves. Here we have a squad which is made up of old Imperial Guard figures, which again, Imperial Army, they are that old. Uh, you could just as easily um, use the confrontation figures and give them heavy weapons um, instead of just basic las guns and las pistols from the sprues. Um, I think there were a few space pirate heavy weapons available, perhaps under the Iron Claw label, although those really are not common, so you're unlikely to have a lot of those lying around, but they could equally be used as food for the heavy weapon support. Uh, and that brings me to the close of the infantry section of my Gene Stealer Cult army. And now I'm going to move on to the vehicles. As I've said in all of the previous videos, the Games Workshop range of vehicle kits on the Rogue Trader was very limited, and most of those vehicles which would be available to a Gene Stealer cult weren't released until quite a way into second edition with the massive expansion of Imperial Guard kits. The Sentinel, however, was available as the infamous Egg Walker under Rogue Trader, so you can put in some of these as units of Cult Scout Sentinels. Um, there was, however, another vehicle in the Rogue Trader army list for the Gene Stealer Cults, and I think it may just have been the Chaos Cults, uh, which is a little more unusual and I've really only included it out of a point of interest, and that was the Cult Limousine. And the thing about the Cult Limousine is Games Workshop didn't make it, but they told you to use a 1 to 43 scale model car instead, and you would just convert this as you wished uh, to make it fill in as one of the limousines that was used to allow Gene Stealers to move around without their alien features being seen. Uh, so this is a 1 to 43 Cadillac V16 from the 1930s. And I've blocked off the windows and tinted it. And more significantly, I've added a couple of bolters under the wheel arches for some concealed firepower. Now, depending on how you'd converted some of these, if you had them, you might be able to get away with using them as uh, Achilles Ridge Runners. But you could only do so unofficially. I really don't see Games Workshop stores tolerating these figures. And get Warhammer World, no chance. You know, it has to be Games Workshop. So, as I say, this is just included as a, a point of interest to show really how things have changed over the years. Now that I've finished looking at my Gene Stealer Cult Army, I'm going to start looking at the models available for the High Fleet itself. And I'm starting here with this Brood Lord, and he, in fact, was created for the Gene Stealer Army list. Uh, as I mentioned, they were entirely separate, and this guy gave you an option to one that was sitting down. He's obviously far more dynamic as he's charging into battle at the head of his army. Uh, so he's going to be part of the command element for my high fleet force. And another one is the Tyranid Prime. Now this figure is a plastic figure that was originally released with the Advanced Space Crusade box set. You could also get the sprues individually. And I think there was a simplified version of Advanced Space Crusade called Space Marine Scouts, which included some of this figure. Uh, but in Advanced Space Crusade, you got six Tyranid uh, multi-part plastic figures. And unusually for this figure, he has got both bone swords and a death spitter. Typically on figures, you would have one or the other. 
Tyranids didn't get the option for using multiple bioweapons until later on when the kits were updated. Uh, so I really converted this one just so I can make him stand out from the other Tyranid warriors in my army. And here we have two squads of Tyranid warriors. Both of these are all plastic from the Advanced Space Crusade game. You'll see I've armed one of them with Death Spitters and the other with bone swords. And the secondary limbs on both of them terminate in these clawed hands, and I would count those as um, rending claws instead. And there was a metal figure released under Rogue Trader. Uh, a lot more of the metal figures started to come out under the second edition. Uh, that only had bone swords, so if you wanted the Death Spitter, then you had to get the plastic version from Advanced Space Crusade. As I think I mentioned earlier, you could get it separately, but there were no other weapon options included. Of course, the gene stealers were available for the core of your army as well. You just took those from uh, either Space Hulk, Space Crusade, or you bought the metal figures. Uh, there were also some other metal figures that were available at the time. Here we have them. Termagants. Now, they weren't called Termagants at the time, they were released. These were actually the first production version of the Tyranid Warrior. You see they've got a far more of a quadruped appearance and they are much smaller. Uh, when this version of the Tyranid Warrior was released, these would be labelled as Hunter Slayers and you could use them in Advanced Space Crusade. Of course you have to buy them separately, they're all metal figures. And there is in fact an even older version available. It never got a full release. It's sort of a bit bigger than these guys, has the same sort of slouched quadruped pose rather than standing upright. And there are also some fan sculpts available of that online. So if you're trying to hunt down the original version, make sure that's what you're getting and not a fan sculpt. There is one other option available for the core of your army. And that is, of course, the Ripper Swarms, living carpets of creatures. But these aren't exactly Ripper Swarms. These are squigs. That's right. The original squigs were creations of the Tyranids. And they were in the first Tyranid army list. The idea was that the Tyranids captured orc DNA and used it to create this uh, swarms of, uh, of tiny little creatures just for some basic tasks. When orcs attacked the Tyranids, they recognised the inherent orkiness of these things and liberated them and then began to breed them. And of course, all of that has now changed and squigs are purely orky. But if you've got these old figures, they will do quite nicely as ripper swarms in your Tyranid army. And finally for today, we're going to close with one of the ugliest figures Games Workshop has ever produced. Well, so I've heard it referred to by some YouTubers. And this is the Screamer Killer, the original version of the Carnifex. Whereas today the Carnifex has all sorts of weapon options. All you got with the Screamer Killer was the Bioplasma Spit and some great big scythe arms to rip people apart with. And this was an all-metal figure uh, available individually. Of course, it's now called the Screamer Killer again in the Codex when you put this combination of weapons together. So it's sort of come full circle and it's kind of appropriate to be using this figure to represent it. And I'm going to close this video with a shot of the combined Gene Stealer Cult and Tyranid High Fleet Army that I have available using Road Trader models. Um, I've got far more available for the uh, Gene Stealers. There's a greater variation of troops available. The Tyranids really didn't expand a great deal until 2nd edition, but you can still form a perfectly usable army if you wanted to. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed looking at this today. Uh, thanks for watching. I will be doing one more of this style of video. I'll be looking at the great enemy itself. Um, that might be next month, depending on whether I can gather and paint all the figures in time. Anyway, I'll say well, thanks for watching again. Bye.